So, they had a talk with him this week and said, you don't have to do everything. You don't have to hit a home run every time. Take some base hits, and we'll be fine. Well, last week we did that game between Oklahoma and Nebraska. And offensively, Nebraska only recorded seven first downs. However, their defense played lights out. And, of course, it always starts, uh, as you mentioned at the top, one of the best defensive players in the country, one of the best players in the country, Indomitian Sue. This guy dominates the game in every facet. He is so good against the run, so powerful, hard to move out of there. An excellent pass rusher, not always getting the sack, but almost always getting pressure. He's also very productive. Interception against Missouri, had the block kick last week against Nebraska, and the intangibles, a very smart guy, and always hustles to the ball. Well, on this senior day, you can see the blue jerseyed and blue helmet clad Kansas Jayhawks, and here they take the field. KU takes the field. A reminder coming up. It's the Nebraska Cornhuskers and the Jayhawks of Kansas kick off in just a few moments. Going to be a going to be a very important game as you look at uh, Coach Mangino on the sideline. These Jayhawks have won the toss and they have deferred to the second hand. So we'll get an opportunity to see the KU defense and the Nebraska offense first this afternoon as Brandstetter prepares to kick it off and Kansas will have the wind behind them here in this first quarter. Expect to see both quarterbacks today for uh, Nebraska, Zach Lee and Cody Green. I would suspect Zach Lee will get the start. Dual safety. This is going to come down to Marlowe at the two-yard line. Far side of the field, 35-40, and then tripped up as he crosses the 40-yard line. Anthony Davis with the tackles. You take a look at Zach Lee and his profile. Because of the uh, running game issues they had earlier in the year, they had gone with Cody Green, started against Baylor, started last week against Oklahoma. The more veteran uh, Zach Lee now getting the start. Of course, he came in against Oklahoma there in the second quarter with the ball on the one-yard line and finished out that game. Not surprised by this at all. They need a guy just to manage the game with the way they play defense. So you, you think that we will see Green, but it's just going to be after a couple of three series. I would imagine so, yeah. But they're going to go on top on first down. And the ball is caught. And the receiver falls down as the defensive back, Davis, had fallen down just prior to that. And it goes for a big gainer to Niles Paul. 35 well, yards. Well, right away, taking advantage. This has been the weak spot for Kansas defensively is that left cornerback spot. Anthony Davis gets the start. Today, Damon Patterson has taken a turn there. DJ Bashirs has taken a turn there. And right away, they go after Davis, who hasn't played much since the beginning of the season. Hey, Lou, going to be hit at the line of scrimmage and spun around by Lubbock Smith. It'll be a gain of a couple. And here are the impact players. Ed. Matt O'Hanlon last week with three interceptions, national defensive player of the week. Philip Dillard, the weak side outside linebacker, had a big interception against Oklahoma there in the fourth quarter with two minutes left that sealed it. And Alex Henry missed a field goal last week from 43 yards, kind of rare, but a really good day punting a 66-yarder earlier, early in the game against Oklahoma that flipped the field. Chris Brooks in motion. They run it back toward the boundary. Pitch. 20, 15, down to the 10 is Roy Hellu, and it will be a first and goal of Nebraska. That is a gain of 14 yards on the running play as Lubbock Smith will force him out of bounds. And Hallou, uh last week, of course, had a breakout game, second year in a row that he's gone over 100 yards against Oklahoma. Injured his shoulder against Missouri, was really banged up, didn't practice much, had a full week of practice last week. Expect maybe another option here. He's running very well. And at fullback is Legate, number 48. Follow him and you'll follow the ball. He takes it outside to the left, and they will go to the four-yard line. He the ball, the ball carrier, and it's going to be Holden Tharp making the tackle for the Kansas Jayhawks. Now, earlier this week when we talked on the phone with the coaches from Nebraska, we asked them in terms of, or to talk in terms of, how important it was to get a quick start offensively. Well, and, and great call early by Sean Watson, I think, to go right after that weak spot of Kansas's 
defense even though it was good coverage by Anthony Davis just hasn't been playing much I thought that was a nice call to start Zach Lee at quarterback with a second down and goal Heavily right up the middle he'll take it in the vicinity of the one yard line and it's going to be third down and goal for the Huskers and now if you're Kansas what you have to be aware of is the play action pass because they've been getting pounded a little bit here by Halu I would suspect Sean Watson is going to call a play action pass here remember last week it was Ryan Hill the tight end who snuck out and was wide open against Oklahoma possibly the same thing Hill to the right of the formation Hill the tight end to the right there was a wing just beyond him but they run it the other way on the keeper Lee loses the football recovered in the end zone by Hello it is touchdown Nebraska Drew Dudley made the hit the middle linebacker and obviously since there was no signal from the official that that ball was not across the plane as yet well second week in a row that Nebraska has fumbled uh, a option play down around the goal line and that was Justin Springer not much of a hit there on Lee probably should have pitched that they had a lead block out there only one defender but Halu very heads up makes the play extra point attempt by Henry up and it is good so a fumble recovery in the end zone give credit to Roy Halu it is touchdown for the Nebraska Cornhuskers and seven to nothing they go on top to play opening quarter. We'll be right back. Well, the now famous number 93 of the Nebraska Cornhuskers in Dominican Sioux. And uh, if there is anybody in college football, as you look at Todd Reesing on the near sideline, the starting quarterback for the Jayhawks, if there's any man in college football who creates as much of a problem as Sue, I, I don't know of anybody who creates more of a problem than he does for sure. This is McDougal on the kick return, and he'll take it to the 31 yard line. And let's take a look at that uh, player profile of the starting quarterback for the uh, Kansas Jayhawks. Been really struggling the last four ball games. Finally came out that he is battling a groin injury on his right side. So when he twists into his throw, he has a problem. A little bit of a problem when he gets out of the pocket. So we'll track that, but they just need him to settle down a little bit. He felt like he needed to put too much on his own shoulders there in the middle of the season, especially when Jake Sharp got injured Jake Sharp in the backfield along with Reesing and he throws it to Sharp on first down and Jake drops the football and very alertly Nebraska was out there all over that and uh, although it was a forward pass Tell me about the impact players. Uh, Desmond Briscoe him. had 176 yards receiving last year against Nebraska. They really need a big game out of him today. Jeff Spikes, who had been benched at right tackle, goes in at right guard to try to handle Sue. We'll watch him all day. And Daryl Stuckey, all Big 12 safety first team last year, needs some big hits and possibly some turnovers out of him this afternoon in his last ball game here at Marrow Stadium. That's Meyer in motion. And going to be a quarterback draw. Injured groin and all. He will take it to around the 34 yard line tackle by Eric Haig and it'll be a third down situation for the Jayhawks Ed, uh, your game plan. Well I think they need to be hard headed with the run game not only we're going to see sharp but a forum we'll see in there as well wear out Kerry Myers hands those short intermediate passes are key and for Nebraska last week they played quite a bit of man and some blitz against Oklahoma I think today go back to the zone coverage they do so well because I think they can get plenty of pressure with their front four. So empty backfield with the exception of the quarterback Reesing and with Nebraska this has been an automatic blitz although they did not on that play throws to Meyer in and out of his hands and it'll be punting time for the Jayhawks. Not quite on the money usually you would expect Meyer to make that catch. And you know so much has been put on Todd Reesing and his struggles 10 turnovers in the last four games. But uh, there's been things like that the Meyer fumble of course against Texas Tech Briscoe had the drop on a sure touchdown against Oklahoma so it hasn't been all the quarterback and they need to get in sync here a little quicker. Well here's the boot. 
ball on the run pushes him all the way back inside the 10 and a penalty marker comes down. Well it, it's <laughs> a block in the back. Unbelievable how sometimes guys that, that was I believe they're going to get Graham Stoddard number 38 for Nebraska. 57 yards on the kick eight on the return. Looked to me like he had Drew Dudley. A legal block in the back by number 38 of the receiving team. Penalties half the distance to the goal and it's first down. So we'll take a timeout. One more look at the push in the back. It is right there. We'll be right back. Seven to nothing. Huskers. ESPN's College Football on ABC. Presented by K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life. The power to help you succeed. And Bud Light. With the just right taste that's not too heavy, not too light. The difference is drinkability. Well, today's game is the final home appearance for Todd Reesing, Daryl Stuckey, and right here, Kerry Meyer. And Kerry is particularly good to mention. And the fact he came here as a quarterback. Uh, Reesing came in as a young player, and he beat him out. And Kerry Meyer went to the coaching staff and said, hey, you know, it's not going to ruin my ego. I want to play. I want to help my teammates. Been a wide receiver and has contributed mightily to this uh, Jayhawk offense. As the running play, Halo breaks a tackle and dives out across the 15-yard line. And let's not forget, even though Kansas has been on a tough stretch here, how good this senior class has been. And let's, you know, you sometimes forget in 2007, they went to the Orange Bowl, beat a very good Virginia Tech team. Yep. And for the first time in Kansas history, consecutive bowl bursts, and, and including last year and the year before to the Orange Bowl. So even though it's a tough stretch, we really need to make sure you understand how good this class has been. Second down and short. Got a down to play with, but they're not going to. It's going to be a quarterback keeper. Close to the first down, but I'm not sure. Yeah, he did get it. Holden Tharp with still another tackle. We're going to have to keep an eye on his numbers today because the freshman out of Mulvane in Kansas, it just seems to, I think we've already got him for three tackles. He is one of those, uh, I like to call throwback kind of guys. Not a lot of pretense. He just uh, does his talking with that uh, headgear and his shoulder pads. And I think what Mr. Tharp should look for here, even though it's heavy, again, be afraid of the play action on this. This feels like one of those downs. Third down just over one. Robinson in the ball game, and Robinson is going to be stopped. He does not have the first down. So a nice job of the KU defense, and it's going to be punting time for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And keep in mind, they will be punting into a pretty stiff breeze here in Lawrence. Chris Harris is a man who got credit for the tackle. A little shocked that Robinson is in there. Halu, of course, has that shoulder injury. Didn't look like he got hurt on the play before. Nothing against Robinson, but when you've got that hot hand of Halu, you would suspect that he'd be the one on the inside run there on third and short. Henry back to punt. Good. Well, it's not good. The wind grabbed it. It has given a big KU bounce, and that thing is not going to go past the 50-yard line. Well, tonight on ABC's Saturday Night Football, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish face off with the Panthers of Pittsburgh. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Now, some parts of the country are going to see Texas Tech, Oklahoma State. So to find the game in your area, go to ESPN.com and search maps. 7 to nothing. Huskers on top at the 8.54 mark of this opening quarter. Jake Sharp right up the middle. Jake will take it for three. Jake is another guy who has been a big contributor. But Ed, I went and I looked back. Third game of the year was Duke, which they won handily. Up until that point, he had 227 yards. And since then, which is what, five games, he only has had 141. And it has been a big difference because they've almost had to abandon the run at times. Yeah, he had a calf in, uh, injury in practice before that Duke game uh, and it, it, starting to look healthy though we saw him last week against Kansas State looks like he might have some of that speed back racing 
play action throws his pass complete flags down all over the place Briscoe the receiver and enough for the first down to the 38 yard line of Nebraska and I think they're going to get an offensive pass interference this was a pick pass play interference by number 86 of the offense the 15 yard penalty and replay second down that's Barry mm -hmm. the tight end yeah he was running a crossing route and made no bones about the fact that he was basically blocking as he went to clear out and it wipes out what 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 was a very good catch by Desmond from Briscoe watch as he goes to cross with Beery and he just absolutely gets a decleater against Philip Dillard the only problem is that would be legal if it was a running play but on a passing play obviously the offense cannot hit them and that that wipes out what would have been a first down well, you see on the sideline uh, that is not a, a greeting of nice job well you don't you don't have to put your arms up you can just keep running this pass thrown complete to sharp and it'll be a gain of about five yards so it'll bring up third down and still long for the Jayhawks they got to take it all the way down to the 40 yard line of Nebraska and I think we should remember that penalty because that would have been a first down in Nebraska territory 38 yard line yeah and now you get that penalty and uh, against this defense you just can't give them any help. Crick and Sue, the two defensive tackles for Nebraska. Good block for the quarterback. Pass thrown complete. That's Meyer. Bites his way forward to the 46 yard line. Amuka Mara is there to make the stop. And Amuka Mara will stop him about five yards short of the first down. Amuka Mara, one of those guys that the Polini brothers, of course, Bo, the head coach, and his brother Carl, who's a defensive line coach and defensive coordinator, switched from wide receiver to cornerback when they got here. And his development this year, they've been working with him about being confident. We saw last week against Oklahoma that great interception starting to pay off. Low kick. Let's it go, and that ball is going to be touched dead at the five-yard line. So we're going to take a timeout. We will come back. Nebraska will be scrimmaging from deep in their own territory. So welcome back to Lawrence, Kansas, for the second straight time. This uh, Nebraska offense is having to scrimmage from deep in their own territory, this time at the five-yard line. Hello. Hit at the line of scrimmage, no game. Holden Tharp, the first man to make contact. You know, you were talking about Tharp earlier. He's a guy, of course, mid-season. Clint Bowen, the defensive coordinator, and his staff decided to start playing some of these younger players. A guy that they wanted to redshirt. But uh, they needed a little more attitude, a little better tacklers. They had hoped they could sit him down, but uh, they say he is not back down. And actually, he's responded much better than they expected he would. He's got four tackles already this afternoon, and we're at the 548 mark of the opening quarter. And he seems to do it now every game. Gets better and better. Good play action. Lee got a man wide open at the 23-yard line. It is caught and still headed downfield as Niles Paul and able to say finally stopped at the 42-yard line. 37 yards in the play. Well, this is the type of offense as we start headed heading towards the Big 12 championship. Of course, it's looking more and more like next week's game. Nebraska, Kansas State may settle this whole thing in the north. If they can, if Nebraska can get something like this going, and that was a nice call by Sean Watson to totally confuse Kansas defense. Niles Paul came all the way across the formation with some play action. Uh, they're going to be tough to deal with with this defense that they bring to the field. From the 42, little play action. Lee overthrown. In fact, the closest man to him was the Kansas defender. Let's go to New York, Matt Weiner. Okay, Matt, thanks so much. Our situation, seven to nothing. Cornhuskers on top. Just under five minutes to play, first quarter. Hello, we'll take it to the 45, tackled by Tharp. 
That's tackle number five. Maybe we should start a, uh, a a tackle counter when the defense comes out for the Kansas Jayhawks. But the young man is really putting himself in an elevated position, and rightfully so. And it's interesting because uh, because Kansas has struggled so much on offense with turnovers. I think a lot of people have overlooked how much steady improvement this defense has made since some of those changes were were instituted, including John Williams coming in at defensive tackle and Lubbock Smith to safety. John Williams has been also a mainstay. Was an offensive lineman. They moved him over. Number 71 is going to stay on defense. Option play. And on the pitch back, knocked out of bounds. Let's see. Well, he's still looking to spot. Now he does at the 48. Left had there defensively. And it's going to be punting time for the Cornhuskers. And Laptad is shaken up. Laptad did a really nice job coming over there defending it, but I think he ducked his head. It looked like the helmets collided between him and Halu. And because he's down on the sidelines, they're going to call it. Even though he's off the field, it's too dangerous to have a young man laying that close to the, uh, to the action. So the linesman right there blew the whistle, pointed toward himself, saying it's my time uh, because of the injury. And you can see Laptad is... Uh, Looks a little foggy right now. Yeah, he's he's falling down and he catches a forearm and a helmet. Good physical run by Halu, but because he was falling down, Laptad uh, took one in the head. McDougal, the deep man. Henry with the punt. Very high, but again, the, the wind has this one. He touched dead at the 31 yard line. Jimmy Johnson's misfortune in Texas opened the door for Mark Martin. And now with just two races left, the pressure is on. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues at Phoenix. Coverage begins Sunday, 2.30 Eastern on ABC. Telecast presented by Goodyear. And a reminder that Johnson has won three of the last four races that have been run at that Phoenix International Raceway. Of course, Mark Martin, I think, won the last one. Anyway, it makes for good conversation. Our score seven to nothing. First down at the 31. And Jake Sharp right up the middle. There's just not much there. They have made some changes with the offense on that front. Looking that, that they have to block Sue and the likes of Jared Crick and Pierre Allen and Barry Turner. But they're not really able to just blow them off the line. No, they took Brad Thorson from left guard, moved him to right tackle. Number 76, Jeff Spikes, who had been starting at right tackle and struggling over to right guard. And Capra, number 59, goes over to left guard. Racing looks over and the points. Corner blitz. Yep, there's got one coming. And the ball is thrown incomplete. Jonathan Wilson. I'm not so sure that Jonathan was the intended receiver. I thought the deeper man is. And that uh, McDougal was the guy that he really was looking for. Good protection for Kansas up front. But here's all the changes they made. That's a redshirt freshman at left tackle. There are no seniors on the two deep for Kansas' offensive line. They're still looking, of course, Mark Mangino's background on offensive line coaching, still looking for a leader. Third down, line to make is the 41 yard line. Blitz coming off the left corner. Reese going to be set at the 24. Amukamara. Amukamara comes off the left side. He ran all the way across the field. And just as they got to the hash mark, decked him for the first sack. Well, Amukamara is really starting to turn into a nice player. Watch as he starts to creep towards the line of scrimmage. And it's a rollout. And nobody to pick up. As a matter of fact, there was so much confusion on the right side of that line. We just mentioned Brad Thorson, the new right tackle, didn't know who to pick up. On the run, Paul. And he'll be tackled at the 47 yard line. This time, the best field position that Nebraska has started with, and that pass to Cooper is caught in the tackle immediately by Anthony Davis. And Davis, a young man who 
started the beginning of the season. Gabe, nice read by him. He sees the blocker. He was out there covering number 84, Brandon Kenny, but read right through that. But uh, they moved him back to scout team, worked on his confidence, and uh, getting his first starts at the beginning of the season. Glad to tell you that Laptad is back in the ball game. So. Maybe a little fuzzy after that hit on the sideline, but happy to see that he's back for the Jayhawks. Hello. Turns it back inside. Going to be hit by Justin Thornton. Short gain right there. It'll be third down. Let's call it 10 for Nebraska. If you just joined us, the Huskers went right down the field. Bang, bang with a couple of plays that uh, the first one almost a home run. Then they took it into the end zone on a fumble by the quarterback. Zach Lee and it was recovered by Hello for the touchdown so officially touchdown by recovery by Hello. Since then their offense has not really done a whole lot. Got to take it this time to the 43 yard line. Middle screen ball is loose incomplete on the pass. Justin Thornton broke it up and a nice job defensively at the top of your screen. Hello went circling out of the backfield. I feel certain that's who they wanted. It was the Kansas defender was all over him. Maxwell Anye Boule, another senior playing his last game, did an excellent job reading Hello, and that's right where Zach Lee was trying to go with that screen. So Henry to punt it away third time that the Cornhuskers have punted here in the opening quarter and a timeout has timeout. been called by Nebraska. So we'll take a timeout seven to nothing Nebraska on top we'll be right back. So we are back Nebraska called the timeout now they will punt third time to take kick. Now Henry. Waiting for the snap. He's got McDougal facing him, and here's the boot. Boy, they almost got to hit. This one, a spiral, so it penetrates that wind better. Picked up. Wow. You don't pick up a ball at the four yard line. <laughs> Even if it goes out of bounds, you don't take a chance on getting hit and fumbling and giving away a free seven points. <laughs> and what do you think the special teams coach is telling the true freshman wow. McDougal right now? Exactly what you said. <laughs> well, and Dominican Sue. Has not been a huge factor so far, nor has Crick, his uh, fellow defensive tackle. But it is because Kansas is moving things away. From yes, them. they are. They're moving the pocket, even when, uh, of course, Crick, as you mentioned, having a nice year as well, leading tackle. But they're moving the pocket or getting the ball out very quickly out of Reese's hands. Worst field position of the day for the Jayhawks as they scrimmage from their own six yard line. Seven to nothing, Nebraska leads. Jake Sharp. Well, that's some tough sledding right there as they ran right into the teeth of uh, you know who. <laughs> and you see, you know who getting off the bottom of the stack in Dominican Sue. You know, it's interesting watching. Notice the stances of these defensive linemen. They're kind of squatted down. Remember Randy White for the Dallas Cowboys? Randy White used to play that way where his he, he kind of squat down and read you and use his hands and try to squeeze you off. And these guys play that way. And Carl Pelini, the defensive line coach, does such a fine job of having these guys read the plays. They're not just charging through straight up the field. They squat, read, and use their hands really well. Look at Sue. He's just taken his hand off the ground. And what he's looking to do as that is the end of the first quarter we'll talk more about it he also was looking to drop into coverage if you can believe it we'll be right back Those people have been very busy. They did basketball last night. And this gentleman right here, he probably needs to be playing with the balancing act he's got going. Lemonade's a tough sale today. It's a little chilly. I think <laughs> coffee would go a little better on his head. Unless you sell something else with the lemonade. Here's Reason. Has five, has ten, and then very wisely slides down at the 23 yard line. 
So, Ed Cunningham, as uh, we look at what has uh, happened so far in this football game, defensively, both teams, with exception of that quick start by Nebraska, that's the difference. And now you, you want to see Reesing with that groin. He takes off running. Looks okay. You know, the coaches have said it's not that bad of a groin injury. They're kind of wondering if it's been more in his head than anything else. He looked pretty good on that run there. Good call. Got the pass incomplete, thrown a little low for Jonathan Wilson, the junior out of Klein Forest High School in Houston. Well, there's Holmes with the cover, excuse me. Well, there is one thing that is certain is that Todd uh, Reesing has not been his normal self over the last four ball games. Over 10,000 yards in his career, like we showed you at the top of the game. Uh, first four game losing streak as a starting quarterback at Kansas, and he just is not really that accurate so far. Fifth, Kale Pick has come into the lineup, number seven as well. Reesing pitches the ball back, and it is Pick who will have the gain to around the 28 yard line. And that's going to be a gain of about four and a half yards in the play. Alfonso Dennard defensively. Now is the time where you you have to think of Kerry Meyer who's lined up to the right in the slot being the guy that they will look for. Look for Meyer to work somewhere in the middle of the field. He's working against Gomes who's a very good cover guy. Third down line to make the 33. Good job of protection. Pass is caught by Meyer. A diving catch. And I think because of that effort, that's going to be enough for the first down. Well, this is this is such a hard route to cover. It's like he's going to run a crossing route, then plants it, comes back out. And Gomes, who was right on the spot, almost uh, able to defend it. But that is such a – and Meyer so good at that route, too. We've seen that so many times. And now what they'll do later in the game, they'll run like he's coming across the middle. He'll fake back to the outside, and then he'll cut back to the middle. And that is a double move that's even harder to cover. So it's a first down. Kansas holds on at the 13-10 mark of the second quarter. Pass in the flat, and that's too tall. It was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Briscoe was the intended receiver. And right now, let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary stats. Well, a little better than we saw last week. Oklahoma and Nebraska, I think it was 23 total yards. At, uh, after the first quarter. So at least we're up to uh, 100 and almost uh, 30 here. Well, the thing that Coach Pelini doesn't want to see is what we saw last week, and that is over 100 yards in penalties against his ball club, and they got that early, early push in the back, and he was rolling his eyes already. I don't blame him. That pass is off the mark, looking for Jake Sharp. Matt Weiner in New York. What do you got? For I, 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 it's been a long time since you've said we've been able to say this. It looks like the wheels may have come off the Trojan. Pressure. Ball tipped. And it's going to fall harmlessly at the 43-yard line. And I think it was Dillard. Philip Dillard, who was coming on the blitz, who may have gotten a hand on it. Gomes was there with him. Dillard is such a great story. Young man did not even play the first two games of the season, uh, and that was really set up nicely by Crick. Crick held up the left guard Capra in the center hatch and let Dillard run completely free. So needs to go over there to 94 and give him a little fist bump because that was a good play by the defensive tackle. Fourth punt of the afternoon by the Jayhawks. Low line drive, and because of the coverage team, it is uh, Nebraska had to run away from it. Got to be touched dead at the 22. So it's a timeout. 12:43 left in the second. Seven to nothing, Nebraska. Buffalo Wild Wings presents the top 30 plays of the last 30 years. 13. In the 1983 championship game, a late touchdown gave number one Nebraska a chance to tie and win the title. But Coach Tom Osborne decided to go for two and the win. This is for the national championship for Nebraska. The pass was broken up and the Miami Hurricanes were crowned champions. Follow the top 30 countdown all season long. Brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. By the way, Nebraska had been ranked number one every week of the season entering that game. And uh, be sure and see play number 12 revealed tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern.
Lee keeps it, breaks the tackle at the 35, and he is going to pick up 15 more yards after breaking that tackle by Daryl Stuckey. Wow, they say finally out at the 46. Yeah, Anye Boule, the defensive end, just completely blew his responsibility. He did not see that the quarterback still had the ball, and, and the backside defensive end, he's just got to, the term is stay home, meaning don't chase it. If you don't see it, just sit right where you are. There's no reason to move, and that opened up a wide lane. That actually lane was late. Chris Harris who missed the tackle, and uh, finally pushing him out of bounds was Daryl Stuckey. Make the run, going to go long. First guy out to practice, yes. Niles Wade was so far behind the defender, the ball was thrown behind him, uh, resulting in not a touchdown, but a huge gainer of 37 yards. It was not a blue jersey, very close to it. Well, the whole thing with the play action, and this Sean Watson right now is calling a really good game. Watch the safeties start to move up to the line of scrimmage with the play fake. And that allows Paul, Niles Paul, to run right by them. It, that fake made everybody on defense think run. Legate in the ball game at fullback. First and goal. And uh, this time, Helu is not going to have very much at all. And Sean Watson has been taking some grief by some of the Nebraska followers. But when you think of everything that this offense has been through, forget everybody they graduated, Joe Gans and that group. But they, of course, had to remove Quentin Castile, the really solid running back from the team back in August. Halu had that shoulder injury. Rex Burke had a really promising freshman running back, hurt his foot. The offensive line's been banged up. It's been tough sledding for this offense personnel-wise. Brooks in motion. Throws for the end zone, and that's well overthrown. Maybe had a step. Brandon Kenny, the intended receiver. I believe was having to run pretty hard. Misses on it. Going to be third down and goal. And this feels like as, as the smaller bodies come in and some of the bigger bodies come off, maybe a little bit of a misdirection. Uh, I, would, I would get Lee out of the pocket again here. Maybe to his right, but I, maybe some flow to the left and then a bootleg to the right. Third down. Five step drop, fade route, corner of the end zone, knocked away nicely by the defender. McNeil, the intended receiver, Justin Thornton, was right there to say, let's just take a, a, a basketball swat at this one and knock it to the ground, which is exactly what he did. And nice job by Kansas defensively. It was all, uh, everybody was packed in for Nebraska. They did try to cross them up. McNeil had started on the left side of the formation, and Thornton read that the whole way. 25-yard attempt. Henry splits it. So with 10.47 left until halftime, new score, Nebraska 10 and Kansas nothing. So 10 to nothing, and in this period, uh, it is Nebraska with the win behind them. Kunalik prepares to kick it off, and it'll see this guy has a really good leg as the wind has blown the ball off the tee to further my point of the wind being behind him. And let's see if he probably will reach the end zone with his kickoff. And Todd Reesing, not off to a really good start, now gets the wind in his face. He's had some trouble lately with the ball coming out a little sloppy, not a tight spiral. Got to be very careful on this drive not to let one get hung up and intercepted. Well, as we suggested, it's uh, going to be in the end zone about five yards deep. And Daryl Stuckey says, I will go to one knee. We'll take it at the 20. So let's see if Reesing and company can, can get something going on this senior day in Lawrence, Kansas. Reesing, one of the uh, senior captains, Jake Sharp, uh, along with uh, Stuckey. And of course, uh, Kerry Meyer. And the last three ball games, just an absolute struggle. And a lot of this put a little too much on Reesing, but 
He's pressed a little bit. Now I think Ed Warner, the office coordinator, maybe some screens, a couple of draws, try to get something going with this wind in their face where he doesn't really have to unload it. Oh, well, Purim comes into the ballgame at tailback. And the quarterback's going to keep it. And Reesing, oh boy. Flag goes down, and there should be for good reason. Asante. I tell you what, now, Asante yeah. is the one who had to hit last oh, week in the little demonstration. Yeah, over and, and, Tunnel, yeah. and that is, uh, I mean, this is serious stuff in my book. If a guy is down, watch it for yourself, and then the hit, and you're leading the with the top of the hit here, that is a, an automatic first down. a double no-no yeah. in, my, in my book. I just think that's what we're trying to get away from in college football. And that, so you maim somebody for life. And, and that's the type of one where the officials have been told to consider ejection. And because the player was sliding, obviously giving himself up, uh, I'm not so sure as the referee, Cooper Castleberry, calls his own timeout to talk to Coach Mangino. I, I think wouldn't be surprised. I what, think that's, that's what he's saying. That's what Mark is saying yeah, right now. I don't blame him. That he should be kicked out of the ball game. And... Uh, I'm not going to say he should, but I'll tell you, I certainly wouldn't argue with it if it happened. Yeah. Because if a man is sliding, obviously he is down. He's given himself up. And then, see, he is well, down in the top of the headgear. I'm sorry. And looking at that one, that should be expulsion. Yeah. And I'm see, sure that there's the Big just, 12 there conference. is no place for that. Yeah, None. The Big 12 Conference will certainly look at that on Monday on their review of plays like that. Wouldn't be surprised if something was handed out. Uh, post Reaching to throw on first down, and it's going to be incomplete. <laughs> Kerry Meyer, the intended receiver, and it's Gomes defensively for the Cornhuskers. Well, Reaching seemed to be okay when he got up, but he is now 3 of 11, and that one there, again, he's just not, he's not sharp. He's not himself so far in this game. Not The ball's getting out quickly. They're calling a nice package of, uh, of routes that are happening fast so that this uh, pass rush is not getting to him but he's just really struggling with his accuracy right now 10 to nothing Cornhuskers lead it's a second down and 10 from their own 48 yard line racing that's Briscoe and Briscoe is going to be very close to the first down don't think he has it totally that's his first catch of the afternoon at the 10 10 mark of the second quarter well, Nebraska had a 36-game win streak over Kansas from 69 through 204, which is the second longest uh, over one team in FBS history. What is the longest, though? Quick count. Ball is batted in the air and going to be knocked away on third down, so they do not pick it up. So what is the longest win streak? And when we come back, not when we come back, but a little bit later on, we'll come back and Pay attention to that and answer the Aflac trivia question. Well, now you've got fourth and an inch, and uh, I think this, you just go straight ahead. Find wherever Indomitian Sue is. And it's going to be a timeout, Kansas. Find out wherever 93 is and run a quarterback sneak the other way. So let's take a timeout. 9.42 left until halftime. So we are back, and it's fourth down, and just inches for Kansas, and they sprint to the line of scrimmage. Under center, running play, going to go for the first down. That is Okura. The freshman out of Plano High School in Texas played at Plano East, and 235 pounds, rambles for the first. Now there's 93 to the right. I promise you, that they called this play suspecting that that's where Sue was going to be and run to the left. A good call and a poor him the bigger back. A good call, uh, a good uh, personnel decision as well. So big important first down for KU is a poor him. Right at the middle, we'll take it inside the 35. As KU needs before halftime to get on the scoreboard here. You know, I've been watching uh, Jeff Spikes against uh, Indomitian Sue a lot of this game, and and he's playing pretty nicely. He's he's done a really good job so far. Big physical guy. That's why they moved him down inside. Trevor Marangeli, a freshman, started last week against Kansas State, did not play great, so they moved Spikes, the former tackle, down inside. He's doing okay. He's playing okay. Marangelli is the swing man today. We will see. 
Racing. Pitches back Oporo. Turns the corner. You could hear the contact as he got to the sideline. That's Cameron Meredith. Cameron wears number 34, a redshirt freshman out of Santa Ana, California. And if you uh, remember back to last week's game against Oklahoma, Cameron Meredith and Baker Steincooler, two uh, redshirt freshmen, came into the ball game and really left their mark. They were all over the place and showed great emotion and, uh, and spirit. Yeah, it's kind of scary. Bo Pelini was telling us last week that he thinks his defense is actually going to be better next year because of guys like Stein Cooler and Meredith and how much good experience they're getting this year would be that much better for them next year. Third down. They need to take it to the 28. Quarterback draw. Racing. And this time he slid a little too quickly. And Dominican Sue will get credit for the tackle. And I don't blame him. If if I had Sue on my tail, I would slide quickly also. Yeah, and I, I like the fact that uh, Kansas is going to go for it here. Their kicking game has not been great. Brandstead are only one of four in their last two games. Now I think he'll pour him in there. If I'm Nebraska, I would be aware of, of a uh, a play action fake to a pour him and look for Meyer in the slot over here. Fourth down. Let's call it about a yard and a half. Oh, pour him. Whoa. Puts a head down and bangs into Gomes and went right through him. And with that effort, it is a first down for the Jayhawks of Kansas and the crowd that turned them on. This round is the third time that we've seen Kansas play this year. And this is by far the best performance so far that we have seen from this offensive line. Uh, we saw them against Oklahoma, which is a great front. We saw them against Texas Tech, who played really well in Lubbock. They're playing extremely well up front right now, the Jayhawks. Racing gets the call from the sideline. Opoum spinning, going to take it inside the 20 yard line. And you hear the response from the crowd. Opoum really has been one of the sparks, certainly the offensive line. But that was a second and a third effort. And Amu Kamara is the man who finally made the stop. Now they're playing in front of the chains with a second down and short. And once again, nice job by Spikes. Of course, you end up getting the double team when Tim Beery comes over to hit Sue. But he goes out of the play, but gives Spikes credit. Kept good balance and finished the block. I'll pour him again. Jared Crick with the stop, number 94. The sophomore out of Cozad, Nebraska, had a seven straight running plays. And Apuram, a young man who we were talking about, Jake Sharp, when he got injured before that Duke game, took over for Apuram. And Apuram uh, in there had only had a couple of carries in the last few ball games, but Ed Warner said that they were going to use him more in this game, and we see why. Twelfth play of the drive coming up. A defense for the Jayhawks finally getting a little bit of a rest. On third, they throw the ball to Meyer. 15 at the 10, first and goal, Kansas. Dennard defensively for the Huskers. And it, this play is all about the blocking out in front that time by 81 Jonathan Wilson Wilson did a good job covering his man up and allowing Meyer to get into space kept his hands down mm -hmm. as much as he could as well to keep from being called for holding first and goal the ball is resting at what are we going to call it just outside the five yard line Meyer in motion and a quarterback draw and Reesing will score the touchdown. touchdown. And the waving week as the Jayhawks put it in the end zone. The ball did come loose, but the plane had been broken. Brandstetter to attempt the extra point, trying to make it a three point ball game. And he does. 
And as we go to break, let's take a look from down on the surface of Todd Reese here on his senior day, scoring the first Jayhawk touchdown. Takes it into the end zone. We'll be right back. Welcome back to College Football, presented by Key Jewelers, where our score is Nebraska 10 and Kansas 7. 13 plays, 80 yards, 5 minutes and 49 seconds. Brandstetter will kick it off, and boy, that wind is gobbling any high kick. Paul. Paul is still fighting his way, and he'll take it to the 43-yard line. And did Kansas need that drive or what? No question. I You're mean, right. Uh, and first rushing touchdown against a very, very good defense in the last 14 quarters. But you give tons of credit to Spikes going in there at right guard. And give give the Kansas coaches credit for making that personnel change. But Todd Reesing seeming to get a little confidence. And I like the calls by Ed Warner going with a lot of quarterback run plays. By the way, Nebraska has gained 155 yards on five plays of 10 yards or better. 25 yards on the other 17 plays. A little play action. And incomplete, couldn't hold on. Let's go to New York. Matt Weiner. So we're back in Lawrence, 441 left here in this uh, first half. Jayhawks finally on the scoreboard trying to get a stop here so they can get the ball back. Pressure from behind the ball is pitched. No possession and as he came out of bounds that is going to be around yeah the 38 yard line. So that's going to be a loss of about five yards if not six and that's Arist Wright. Well Hillu had trouble with a pitch last week against Oklahoma remember down on the goal line. Same thing that time. When the ball was pitched, they had run so far. Yeah, you just finish out the play. Yeah, yeah. When, a, when an option play goes that yeah. far, tuck it. the sideline all yeah. of a sudden presents <laughs> it's like the 12th person on the Yeah, you should just tuck that. You're correct. They're down. they got to take it all the way across midfield to the 47. So let's answer the Aflac trivia question, which is Nebraska had a 36 game win streak over KU, the second longest over one team in FBS history. What is the longest? And the answer Notre Dame had a 43 game win streak over Navy from 64 to 206, and now Navy has won two of the last three and over the Irish. Both of those at Notre Dame. Third down. Pressure for the outside. Lee gets by one tackler. The middle linebacker misses him. That's uh, Drew Dudley. Okay, and yeah, then he is five, finally going to be stopped at around the 48 yard line, Chris Harris. And it will be punting time for the Huskers. But he is kicking with the win. They stand to put Kansas deep in her own territory. As we look at Laptad down again. Although we could see Quentin Woods get some in there. He hasn't played much the last three or four ball games. So the fourth punt of the afternoon by Nebraska. Wobbly spiral hits at the five and it goes into the end zone. So the Jayhawks will be 80 yards away following that 52 yard punt. And they will have three minutes and 37 seconds to work with. Tuesday at 8, 7 Central, the season's most entertaining new hour. It's ABC's V. Don't miss a second of the series. It's being called riveting, action-packed, and instantly addictive. ABC's V, all new on Tuesday, 8, 7 Central. This time again, it is Tobin O'Burro, the freshman out of Plano High School. Played at Plano East. And an option play. Reesing pitches it back to him and slows down just a bit as Barry Turner's outside. And you could see 
uh, from the shot that we had that the quickness of this Nebraska defense uh, you you certainly don't have time to slow down and say hey I'm going to pick my spot because as you can see there are like five if not six defenders who were in the vicinity. Jake Sharp uh, has not played. He's uh, he's on the sideline has his helmet on but remember he had that calf injury wonder if maybe he strained it a little bit or you're just going with the hot hand of a poor him which kind of feels like that's the case right now and against this larger defensive mm -hmm. front the bigger running back quarterback draw racing looking for a spot to go and uh, quick Jared Crick is the man who reaches out or Cameron Meredith a biggie pardon 34 rather than 94 Cameron will give you credit that was a nice defensive play this young man we talked about uh, just a few moments ago you see him playing off the offensive lineman and then comes back and makes the tackle that's really good agility for a big defensive lineman isn't it and really good hand placement you know talking to Carl Polini the defense coordinator slash defensive line coach he said Meredith has near perfect technique and you saw that with that inside hand he had total control of the left tackle Hawkinson. Blitz coming off the top of your screen. Pass thrown complete. And he runs around the defenders. That's Briscoe. 40 out to the 45. That's complete. 28 yards. Now the interesting thing because of his athletic ability on speed he just circled around and left those two defenders. Well and that, it, it, the reason that the ball got over there so quickly was that's where the corner blitz came from and when the safety and linebacker went over they were playing catch up they never broke down. So uh, good read by Reese and great run by Briscoe. Racing steps up into the pocket throws the ball too tall for Kerry Meyer down at the 30. And that it couldn't have had a better defensive call on that third and long by uh, Nebraska. They brought the corner blitz. So look at Carl Polini, the defensive coordinator, brought that corner blitz. They had it. You know, Reesing had to throw the quick, what's called a hot read because of that blitz. And uh, the two defenders that were running over there just uh, played bad technique. One of the things that Carl Polini talked with us about on Wednesday. He said focus is what I constantly scream at him because all of a sudden we go to sleep and we give up a big play and they almost did against Briscoe just uh, just a moment ago. Jonathan Wilson and Wilson close to the first down although from here looks like maybe a half yard shy that was a three down lineman look and Barry Turner the defensive end is the one who goes out into coverage and here goes Kansas going fast on third and short Oporum turns it up has the first now he ran into his home man <laughs> to stop his forward progress Barry Turner also was there to help out on the stop number ninety nine and Oporum had a tough looking face there and looks like he's gifty coming up the Capital One halftime report with scores and highlights from around the country I think you got to get Oporum out of there he's he's not he's very gingerly walking around in the backfield racing Meyer over the middle not enough for the first down and here's a case where he threw a really nice pass if you hadn't let him quite so much yeah. Meyer might still be running yeah he just it, it, and racing is just not feeling comfortable right now in the pass game the ball's just not coming off his hand right it's always got a little wobble to it pressure coming up the middle pass to Meyer has this one good for the first down and tackled at the 31 yard line Alfonso Dennard defensively for the Huskers. Well nice read by Reesing. Sees the blitz gets it out there quickly to Meyer who's running the slant but Oporum the running back he, he, he can barely walk. I, I Jake Sharp has to be hurt. 28 now 27 seconds pressure coming pass over the middle is incomplete almost caught by Meyer he had two defenders on him and he couldn't hold on to it Matt O'Hanlon who had three interceptions last week against Oklahoma was the defender who was closest to him and now with uh, 21 seconds left as we look at the incompletion uh, 
you've got to be you've got the two timeouts so you don't have to worry about getting the ball beyond the sticks anything like that but remember Brandstetter only one of four the, the place uh, kicker one of four in his last two games but I think you want seven or eight yards before you're going to try a field goal here here's because of the win here's the situation 21 seconds on the clock timeouts left KU has two Greasy looking still looking gets away and the ball is almost intercepted and then caught by Wilson and Wilson goes out of bounds at the 16 yard line 11 seconds on the clock it's a gain of 15 and the question is with the two timeouts remaining they can run another play stop the clock and have an opportunity to try the field goal if they don't get it in the end zone well and KU takes a timeout there very lucky that that ball is not intercepted by Dennard but uh, Reesing just that that was not a good throw by your senior but gets lucky and now with 11 seconds left and they just burned their timeout you still have the one timeout well you may need that now to get your field goal unit out I I think you go ahead and run the play I don't think you use oh, yeah. that timeout yeah. you, you, you had the ball out of bounds so the uh, clock was not going to start until the snap so probably what they're doing though is talking about that very strategy if they have to just to make sure that they you know they don't allow that clock to run out and so now with 11 seconds with 11 seconds you've got maybe two play throws into the end zone maybe but you just have to be careful at least one you still have the timeout for the field goal so you can run a slant here and use your timeout first and 10 Kansas at the 16. Meyer in motion toward the bottom of your screen racing lobs it for the end zone way 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 too far four seconds showing on the clock they got to go ahead and kick yeah. right here yeah if you did a quick kind of a slant hoping to break a tackle maybe but because that play took so long and you also used your other timeout now you have to bring on brands give credit to the defense of the Cornhuskers Jayhawks will try to tie it up Kerry Meyer whom the pass was intended will come back and now he turns into a holder as you look at Brandstetter it's a 33 yard attempt he got it so heading to the intermission we are all tied up at 10 apiece Kansas 10 Nebraska 10 we are at halftime You're watching College Football presented by K Jewelers, where our score is Kansas 10 and Nebraska 10. Well, for senior day here, they're uh, firing T-shirts into the uh, stadium, into the stands at uh, Memorial Stadium, part of the uh, halftime <laughs> entertainment. Everybody loves a free T-shirt. It'll be interesting to see what happens with senior Jake Sharp. He was not coming in. Tobin Oporum on that last drive got banged up, and Sharp did not come in. Remember, Sharp has a calf injury. From He's walking okay season. right yeah, there, though. Yeah, no, he seemed okay. He had his helmet, was by the coaches. He wears that sleeve on there to keep it warm. But I uh, was a little surprised. Oporum just couldn't even move. So we'll see what happens. We'll track that here in the second half. Stuckey, who is uh, set to return the kickoff, another one of these captains and a senior here this afternoon for KU. Kanataka will kick it off for the Cornhuskers, and they are going to take the wind in the third quarter, giving Kansas the wind behind them for the fourth and final period. And this return is going to come out to around the 23-yard line. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary halftime stats. Well, you mentioned the win, which was pretty stiff at the beginning of the game and through that first half. What's amazing when you look at these stats, 
The first downs for Kansas, all of those in the second quarter when the wind against the was wind. in their face, and it, yeah. they got Ed Warner, the offensive coordinator, got Todd Reesing involved in the run game. Oporum, who comes out now with the uh, first unit here to start the second half, got the running game going. So. I would suspect it's going to be the same. I, I think we'll see Reesing in that run game just like we did at the uh, end of the half there. Oporum puts a head down. He's going to have about three, maybe four yards. So both of these offenses uh, have uh, been in a position where they slumbered just a little bit. But KU showing in the second quarter that they are not slumbering offensively. In the first quarter, Nebraska said, hey, we're not slumbering either. You know, it was interesting. You said at the top of the show, being senior day, what was going to happen? All of that emotion. And now that you have a little bit of success at the end of the uh, the second quarter there, where they where Kansas really moved the ball well, I think they're coming out feeling pretty good about themselves at this point. On second down, they throw the ball. This time, picking up the first down, it's Tim Berry, the sophomore out of Omaha, played at West Side High School. And I can't say enough, Ron. I, this is a good plan by Ed Warner and Mark Mangino. They talked about moving the pocket some, getting it out quick, but this defensive line for Nebraska, after what we saw last Saturday night in Lincoln, has been awfully quiet. They made a couple of plays, but not a lot. It's Barry in motion. Gives it to Oporum, and there's just nothing there. In fact, he may have lost about a half yard. Crick and Turner combining on the stop. Well, we saw last week what happens when you leave and Dominic and Sue against one man to block. Now, Hatch working a lot. The center Hatch working a ton with the right guard spikes. That time they bring in. The swingman Beery, the H back, but uh, I I'll tell you, I think that this is a good plan by Kansas, and I think moving Jeff Spikes inside is working out really well for them. Sue has four tackles on the afternoon. It's Meyer in motion, pressure from the backside. And boy, the middle screen was set up perfectly, and McDon McDougal, I mean, just dropped the football. True freshman out of Ohio. Came to Kansas because he wanted to play receiver, was recruited as a safety to Ohio State, but that one goes easily for the first down and maybe more. They had the uh, left guard and the center were out in the middle, Capra and Hatch, ready to lead the parade. Well, they had the right play, and uh, if, if it is caught, could have gone for big yardage. Third down, the line to make is out to the 46-yard line. Quick pass, Meyer breaks the tackle, 40, 45, 50, he has the first down, and Number more. 10, Meyer. You know, you mentioned at the top of the show, Ron, uh, what Kerry Meyer went through when Todd Reesing got here. And, and once again, you know, let's give credit to Jonathan Wilson. Yes. That's another nice block by him out on the edge. But a good run, picked up his feet. But Kerry Meyer has turned himself into an NFL prospect as a wide receiver after going through a tough time early in his career, losing the job as a starting quarterback. First down from the 43. Racing. Gets the pass away, has it complete, good for the first down to Briscoe. And I mean Briscoe caught it in harm's way and then paid the price. It's good for 19 yards. And also, let's give credit to Reesing. This is a pinpoint throw. Well, he started, you can see the confidence growing. It's, it's strange to say that because he's a guy who is so confident, but it's been a tough stretch for this senior quarterback. That was a really nice play, a good throw just just in front of the safety O'Hanlon. Option, pitch back O'Porum, and there's not much there. That's uh, Dennard, Alfonso Dennard defensively. Doesn't Reesing look like the guy you remember from years past? Just the way he's carrying himself. He's got that confidence. He, he's got the, he just looks different than he has in the last three or four ball games right now. Well, he knows if they're going to win on senior day, they need him and they need this kind of play. It's Meyer 
in motion. Here comes some pressure. He's got to get out of the way, and he just slides down after a very Welcome short gain five. right at the feet of Jared Crick, the 6'6", 285-pound sophomore. Uh, and let's not forget that Kansas has something to play for as well. Of course, Nebraska in the thick for the Big 12 North, but Kansas is not bowl eligible yet. They have five wins, and there's a chance, even if bowl eligible, that they may not go because the Big 12 may qualify more than they have slots. So uh, they may be playing for a bowl game at this point. Third down. They're going to take it down to the 14-yard line to move the chains. Reesing, good protection. Over the middle, there's Meyer. 15, 10, 5, loses the football and goes right into the arms of That's Matt O'Hanlon. Wow, what a play by Gomes. Gomes causes the turnover and it bounces right into the arms of the defender from Nebraska. Wow, Eric Matt O'Hanlon. Who is down, but uh, Meyer did a wonderful job. Stayed alive when Reesing was flush in the pocket, broke away, but watch Gomes finish this. Well, that, I, he just didn't have that very well. That wasn't much of a hit from behind. Well, he oh, yes, it, it was. Yeah. Boy, what a nice play by Gomes. So a timeout with the injury uh, to the player. Tied at 10, and Kansas misses quite an opportunity. So we are back. It is a first down for Nebraska, very deep in their own territory, but they don't care. They just got a turnover that kept KU out of the end zone. Heather bounces it outside, pushed out of bounds, up at the 11. Now they're going to say the 12-yard line. Drew Dudley forced him out of bounds, but as I said, they don't care that they're having to take these snaps so deep in their own territory. KU was about to push this thing in the end zone. What a, what a wonderful play by Dijon Gomes. To finish that, he got beat when Myers went by him, crossed his face when uh, Reesing was scrambling, but Gomes did not give up on the play and just did an excellent job popping that ball out. Going to be a quarterback keeper. Okay, yeah, number five. I don't believe he picked up the first down either. Daryl Stuckey, one of the seniors we've talked so much about, is uh, there Stuckey to make the tackle. They did Stuckey. not. Game of one on the play. Well, Nebraska first downs in the last seven quarters, 13 first downs. As we said, they they have struggled. But in the first uh, quarter today, they played well. They put 10 points on the board. What well enough to get 10 points, I guess, is what I should say. Third down and short. Hello. Well, they got a hole for him and able to have the first down, so they'll hold on to the football. Okay, we're number 10. Legate, nice block. Number 48, the fullback. Stop made by number and Legate, a walk on, of course. Uh, when have you never seen a when have you ever seen a fullback from Nebraska who's not a walk on he had a wonderful block last week did legate against Oklahoma on that 63 yard run by Halu his father played fullback at uh, at Lincoln as well. Tied at 10 apiece, 9.20 to play, third quarter. Hey, Lou, that's a tough hit right in the middle of the line. Nice uh, filling to the hole by Holden Tharp, number 34, the freshman out of Mulvane, Kansas. Well, and you also had Daryl Stuckey coming up. Right now, I think what Clint Bowen, the defensive coordinator, is doing is starting to get safeties down around the line of scrimmage, not afraid of the pass. So for Sean Watson, you've got to start realizing 25 is so close to the line of scrimmage. Go back to that play action. Remember earlier they hit Niles Paul on that nice play action. Second and ten little play action throws it out in the flat. Got it to McNeil and the tight end is going to be far enough for the first down. Finally bumped him out at the 30. That was Drew Dudley defensively but not before he crossed the magic line and all of a sudden a drive that started at the four yard line is out to their own 30. And McNeil a guy who's been pretty quiet this year lined up on the right side working against Wheeler pushes off. 
Good coverage down the field. Lubbock Smith actually did not get sucked up by the play pick, the top, safety over the top. So good read by Zach Lee to come down McNeil, who uh, had a lot of catches last year from that tight end spot. Play action. They throw a second pass to Mike McNeil. People in uh, Nebraska might be fainting that they've thrown two in a row to the tight end. <laughs> Carol Stuckey makes the tackle. Well, they were so used to that last year. Joe Gans found uh, Mike McNeil more times than any tight end had ever caught passes uh, at Nebraska. Well, McNeil broke the record last yeah. year. Not surprising that they would be throwing to him, but uh, as Ed said, that was last year, not this year. <laughs> Second down and five. And here comes Halo. Tonight on ABC's Saturday Night Football, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish take on the Panthers of Pittsburgh. Saturday Night Football, of course, is presented by Southwest Airlines at 8 Eastern at 5 Pacific. Now, some parts of the nation are going to see Texas Tech and Oklahoma State. So to find out the game in your area, go to ESPN.com and search maps. Well, I think the guy you need to look for is McNeil again, lined up to the left. They've been looking at him, and now you've got Lubbock Smith over there covering him. So it's third down. They've got to take it to the 40-yard line. And he got him. First down. McNeil on the receiving end, tackled immediately by Stuckey. You know, and sometimes you think, well, We've gone to him three times on this drive. The defense should know, but now Sean Watson does a nice job of running a crossing route. The two, the receiver, the slot receiver to the right, and McNeil, the tight end to the left, crisscross, and Lubbock Smith could not catch up with him because all of those bodies, including, let's not forget, the umpire is in there. So when you run those crosses, you do it right at the level of the umpire. You got all those bodies, and usually you can get somebody open. Ninth play, the started back at the four yard line. Lee with the fake goes on top far sideline one on one coverage and the defender for some reason ran away from Niles Paul and he makes the catch and uh, now is down with an injury but he was left alone as the defender for some reason ran away from him 47 yards on the receiving end. Yeah Chris Harris just never found the ball. He's got one on one coverage Lubbock Smith the safety is there he spun around and never found the ball little hand playing let's see what happens when Niles Paul comes down with it but Chris Harris just never found it wonder if he maybe landed oddly on his right arm there well some of these devoted students uh, found outside uh, the arena waiting for basketball tickets last night they were not disappointed uh, it was uh, a defeat of Hofstra by uh, KU 101 to 65 and the big name freshman Xavier Henry 27 points on the night which is a school record back to the field of play running play takes it down to the five yard line and we got a marker in the backfield so Lee is tackled at the five. Personal foul, tripping by number 68 of the offense. The 15-yard penalty and replay first down. Now that's Barney Cotton, the offensive line coach. And Bo Pellini having a little discussion. They're going to get the left guard. Yeah, he <laughs> sticks his legs up. Absolutely. You go for that cut block, and you, you you can roll, and you should roll in case you don't get it, but you can't stick those legs up. That's the proper call. So maybe put an asterisk yes. by that uh, play mm -hmm. and that call because all of a sudden it is a first down, and they got to take it all the way to the one-yard line. First and 25. Kenny in motion. Hello. 20 fights his way to the 17. Drew Dudley finally put a stop on him. You know, you mentioned earlier in the game around 104 yards and penalties last week for Nebraska against Oklahoma. How many times, especially early in that game, did we see the offensive line getting penalties that kept any time they got momentum, kept moving them back and moving them back and moving them back. And I think you're right. I think you mark that down, that tripping. And I think that's why Bo Pelini was so upset with Barney Cotton, the offensive line coach, just 
guys, we've got some momentum. We got we got forced a great turnover. We're going to have a 98 yard touchdown drive and then we back ourselves up with a uh, foolish tripping penalty. So now a timeout has been called by the Huskers. 455 left third quarter tied at 10. So the situation second down and they need about 16 yards for the first they have to take it to the one yard line if they're going to pick up the first down exactly 17 to score. Lee has a man in the flat. Did he catch it? Yes, a one-handed stab by Brandon Kenny. This is a thing of beauty here. Watch it. Well, that was a nice play, wasn't it? And Zach Lee did a good job of waiting for this. Good protection up front by the offensive line for Nebraska. Able to step up into the pocket. And now you've got yourself a third and eight. Is uh, Niles Paul is back in the game. I, I, maybe a fade up the top here. He is able five to of five on this drive. Lee, pressure of all the things that he couldn't do is give up a sack, and he just did. Anya Boule, one of the seniors also. And that is big right there because if they do go for the field goal, it's going to be in the vicinity of what, 34 yards. Well, because of the coin toss when Kansas deferred, they chose obviously to go on offense. So Nebraska in the third quarter took the win, so should be a little help. Yeah, in fact, for this guy, 34 should not be a problem at all. And he zings it through. 34-yard field goal. So with 342 left in the third quarter, new score, Nebraska by three, 13 to 10. Kudelik kicks it to the goal line, and Stuckey returns it and brings it out to the 23-yard line. ABC Comedy Wednesday at 9, 8 Central. There are two big reasons to watch the fall's number one new comedy, Ed Norton and Elizabeth Banks guest star, ABC's Modern Family. Well, this ball game has been a, a battle of uh, the offenses struggling a bit. Defense is playing pretty well, and it's been close, which is what a lot of people suggested. That's exactly the way it would be. Three-point game. And in fact, I think that's how much Nebraska was favored by. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Jake Sharp back in the lineup at tailback for KU. Reese has the first down plus seven yards. 17 yards on the carry. Amu Kamara making the stop for Nebraska. Well, this was a designed run uh, by Todd Reesing, and I think that Ed Warner and Mark Mangino have done a terrific job of getting this offensive line ready to play because that took forever to develop, and they had tons of running lanes for Reesing. Reesing. And thrown just a little too far in front, and I believe the ball was tipped. Terry Meyer. Coverage by number seven. Well, when you have a quarterback who's uh, five, we'll call him ten and a half, and a defensive line that is as good as any in the country. These are tall guys. Sue at six foot four, Crick at six six, but they're also they have great recognition. Turner, by the way, got that tip. Yeah. Number 99. Now he's the short one at six foot three. So <laughs> it was all trying. He is the him. shortest guy on the defensive front. Everybody else six four, six five, six six. That's incomplete. Bradley McDougald, and it was Gomes with the hit who uh, makes that play go awry. So now it's a third down and ten. One other thing on Todd Lake Travis High School, which is where he played his high school football, they won. Two nights ago in the first round of the uh, Texas playoffs in Class 4A, and uh, that that the high school has now got 41 straight wins. Well, as soon as they got rid of Reese, they got good. Oh no, he, he did fine. Uh, you know better than that. Yes. He did fine. Though. But I know that he keeps up with them. 
that uh, school has won back to back state championships. Pass thrown complete. Did he hold on? Jonathan Wilson. Nope, they're going to say he did not hold on. Pass is incomplete. It was. Uh, Gomes again defensively on the cover. Well, Gomes is playing in that nickel back. It's the cornerback that plays inside, and he is just really playing physically. Wilson never able to put that thing away, but Gomes, remember, was the guy who caused that fumble by Kerry Meyer down inside the five yard line on the last drive. Yep. Very large play. Here's the kick. Low line drive. Now takes a Kansas bounce. And it will be at around the 27 yard line. Right now, let's take a look at our city inside view. Well, it's been all basically zone type of blocking for Kansas. This is right guard Spikes getting help from Jeremiah Hatch on Indomitian Sue. Get him moved out of the way a little bit. Now you're going to get one, two, three guys to block two inside, Crick and Sue. And even though they're running a little tackle, tackle stunt. Nice job by Sal Capra coming over as they slide their protection to the right. Done a nice job. I believe Sue officially two tackles so far. I think that's right. Yeah. Hello. Stiff arm helped him pick up a couple of more yards as Drew Dudley, the junior out of College Station, Texas, the middle linebacker for KU, uh, is the man who got out there to make the play. And he has had to run almost sideline, the middle of the field to the sideline, a lot of times in pursuit of Roy Hallou. And having Hallou healthy is such a big deal for this offense. We we're talking earlier about some of the people that they were missing. Quentin Castile, of course, was thrown off the team in August, and they have a very promising young freshman, Rex Burkhead, who hurt his foot against Missouri. Dropped by McNeil. And that's the first time tonight that KU has done a really solid job on the bootleg. Mm -hmm. That time, the defender stayed at home and it made a difference. He delivered a little quickly. Yeah, just wasn't quite, didn't feel quite right throwing this. That's a good job by Wheeler. Now, here comes the crowd a little bit. Big third down here. Watch for that crossing route again. Remember, slot receiver one side tied into the other. Watch that cross with McNeil one more time. Nebraska's three of nine in third down conversions. Gonna run it. 40, 45, has the first down, got tagged hard at the 47. Halden Tharp will get credit for the tackle. You know, we've been giving credit to the uh, Kansas offensive line it's, it, because they hadn't been playing well coming into this game, going against one of the best, if not the best, defensive lines in the country for Nebraska. But, you know, this Nebraska offensive line hadn't been playing very well either. They've been banged up. Everyone, just about every starter has missed some time with injuries. But they've been doing a pretty solid job they that have. time. Uh, that time, even though it was a pass, they washed everybody down, and Zach Lee took, did a nice job taking what was there. Well, this time Nebraska is going to come out with two tight ends, two wide receivers, and a tailback. Lee's pass thrown complete and a hit immediately on Drew Young. And Drew, the junior out of Kozad, Nebraska, takes it for very little yardage. That is the same school that Jared Crick comes from, Kozad, C-O-Z-A-D. Stuckey was there to get a piece of him, just enough to knock him down. Figure you may start to see Hello a little bit. I think that Bo Pelini may be telling Sean Watson, let's milk this clock a little bit and start shortening the game for our defense. Linebackers creeping up, and the quarterback keeps it and throws the ball complete. No, incomplete. Ball is knocked away. They are, uh, they, wait a minute. Let's go back. Cooper did catch the football. It came right out. And it looked as though that probably they would call it incomplete. That's not the case. Chris Harris on the hit. And if Chris Harris had turned around, he would have intercepted yes. this pass. <laughs> Play action to the right. And Lee just got this ball there a little late. And yeah, that was that was a catch. Good job. And Kyrie Cooper, a young man who 
Struggled a little bit last week, and that that is a catch. Nice job. Straight ahead with a quarterback sneak, and Lee will pick up the first down. Blakesley, Kata Blakesley, a senior out of Ottawa, Kansas, made the tackle on him. And that should be the final play of the third quarter. Yeah, I don't think uh, Bo Pelini's going to let his offense hustle up and snap it. I think he's ready to get to that fourth quarter. Yep, there's the whistle. That puts the clock in motion. And we are through three quarters of play. 13-10 Huskers. Ladies, the uh, Husker cheerleaders as the running play hit behind the line of scrimmage. And what a play by big number 99, Jamal Green, who stopped the play behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. And uh, right now, it's going to make for a second down, hit about 13 yards for the first. Well, Green just blows off the ball, lined up over the left guard. Williams, who's expecting help from the center, Hickman. And Hickman had already worked his way up to that second level of the linebackers and Green does a good job coming off that inside shoulder to make the tackle for loss. And now the timeout is being called by Zach Lee. So let's take a timeout 13 to 10 Nebraska. 10 wins. Well, they're going to run the play. And Halu looking for a spot, and he's going to be tackled at around the 40 yard line. Third down, and they got to take it to the 33 yard line to pick up the first. Lee's pass caught, but the tackle made immediately. And a flag is down. Are we going to have roughing the passer? I believe we are. I think Jamal Green. Well, McNeil is down after that hit, after he made the reception. And uh, Mike waiting for the trainers to come out. Personal and foul, roughing the passer on number 99 of the defense. The 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Well, and... Uh, Jamal Green makes a big mistake. I think Nebraska probably goes for that fourth down, but you'd you'd rather have them at fourth down. It was late. That ball was out. It was not a uh, shot to the head, but the ball had been out. So let's take a timeout. <laughs> Following that major penalty, first and ten from the twenty-yard line. Halu hit behind the line of scrimmage, and that's a nice job defensively by Chris Harris, the junior out of Bixby, Oklahoma, the cornerback, to come across, get penetration, and stop the play behind the line of scrimmage. Get a feeling that this is the drive for both Nebraska and Kansas during this game. If, uh, if Kansas is able to hold Nebraska to a field goal, Still in the ball game. I just because of the way Nebraska may get after it on defense if they score a touchdown not saying it's over but boy it's going to be tough sledding the rest of the way. Pitch to Hillu. No he held on to the ball throws and it's incomplete at the 18 yard line. Niles Paul the intended receiver and a nice fake by Zach Lee. Had everything he wanted except a good pass. Well, now you've got third and 12. Good job by Anya Boule getting pressure there. But now you've got third and 12. And I, I think you are in, even with a little bit of wind, I think you're in Henry's wheelhouse here. So I think you've got Niles Paul up top. I think this is one where you could look for maybe a post route towards the end zone. Lee looks for a spot to run and he gets knocked down quickly by Jeff Wheeler. 
A little surprised you'd call an option on a third and 12. She, Halo was still trying to reset. Yeah. Yeah, I think the like play was not yeah. run uh, with with a lot of continuity there. Yeah, and and I think this is a win for Kansas after a big penalty against Jamal Green to have Henry coming out. I think this is a big win for the Jayhawks. So it's going to be a 38-yard attempt into the win, squarely in the middle of the field. Good pass, good kick. He's got a lot of foot in this one, and he nailed it. 16 to 10, a new score. Nebraska on top. We'll be right back.